say hello to Singapore. From one of the developing countries in Southeast Asia, it managed to catapult itself to becoming the most developed in the region. As a tourist destination, it is easy to explore even for kids and seniors. Do you like shopping and dining? Are you into history and culture? Perhaps nature tripping is your thing. Maybe theme parks. Whatever reason for visiting, Singapore has something for you. Hey there, poor traveler. We are Vince and Josh. We've already covered some of the basics of traveling to and around SG in our previous video. This time around, we're sharing with you some of the best things to do and places to visit in Singapore. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified when we upload new travel videos. Drawing in millions of visitors yearly, Gardens by the Bay spans 101 hectares of reclaimed land beside the Marina Reservoir. It's best known for its conservatories. The Flower Dome is the largest glass greenhouse in the world, sheltering nine gardens that showcase various exotic plants from five continents. And then there's Cloud Forest, best known for its 35-meter tall centerpiece, the tallest indoor waterfall in the world. This misty world replicates the tropical highland environment, featuring diverse and lush flora, including rare orchids and pitcher plants. You can climb to the top of the waterfall and make your way down via the cloud walk and treetop walk, two elevated walkways that afford fantastic views. While the domed conservatories of Gardens by the Bay require an entrance fee, its outdoor areas remain open to the public for no charge. The Super Tree Grove in particular is worth a visit. Take a relaxing stroll around these giant trees, rising to up to 16 stories and hang out at the Super Tree Top Bistro for a gorgeous panoramic view of the site. Located within Resorts World on Sentosa Island, Universal Studios Singapore is the first ever movie theme park in Southeast Asia. First time po dito guys, sa Universal Studios. <laughs> Kaya excited ako kahit wala akong tulong. The park has 7 theme zones and around 30 rides and shows inspired by Hollywood blockbusters. Each zone has its own themed restaurants, shops, characters, and rides. But our favorites are probably the Battlestar Galactica roller coasters, which are the tallest dueling coasters in the world, and the Revenge of the Mummy, a thrilling indoor ride. The Marina Bay Sand Sky Park is a 1 hectare roof terrace connecting the three 55 story hotel towers of the Marina Bay Sands. Aside from the observation deck that offers a panoramic view of the bay and the surrounding areas, the Sky Park also features the world's longest elevated swimming pool. No, you don't need to be a guest at the hotel to enjoy this. You can still access the Sky Park and the observation deck even if you're not staying in any of the three hotel towers. So, yay! This river is the heart and soul of the city. This is where the legendary Merlion was spotted by the prince and where the founder of modern Singapore, Sir Stamford Raffles, first set foot on the island. For much of its history, this river facilitated trade on its banks, allowing the city to thrive. Today, it is best known for its key areas, Clark Key, Boat Key, and Robertson Key, harboring many dining and nightlife establishments. What better way to explore one of the safest countries in the world than by walking along the river? If you have the energy, you can even take a stroll all the way to its mouth where you'll find the Esplanade, the Fullerton Hotel, and the iconic Merlion. This is best done in the late afternoon when the sun is not too harsh and you will see the city's transition from day to night. This is a pretty long walk and can take long hours. Rest if you need to. End the day with a dinner at Makansutra Glottons Bay or a drink at One Fullerton. Not really a fan of walking? The river cruise might be a better option for you to see some of the iconic landmarks and listen to the informative commentaries about them while sitting comfortably on a bumboat. For this 40-minute river cruise, indoor and outdoor seats are available. Attractions and landmarks to see include the Clark Key, Reed Bridge, Boat Key, Fullerton Hotel, Merlion Park, Bayfront South, and Esplanade. You may alight at any of the stops but you cannot board again unless you purchase another ticket. You may also reserve your slot and get a discount ticket via Cloak. 
After undergoing a major overhaul that began in 1985, Bugis has developed into a buzzing retail district. Tooted by the Singapore Tourist Promotion Board as the country's largest street shopping destination, Bugis is really living up to that title. Flanked by retail shops and food places, this area is really one of the busiest in Singapore, especially during weekends. The nearest MRT station is Bugis Station, but you can also get off at Lavender Station. Kampong Glam is situated north of Singapore River. As the oldest urban district, it breeds history interlaced with contemporary art and ethnic customs, giving the neighborhood an eclectic mix of culture. The majority of the residents trace their roots to the early settlers who are mostly merchants as this used to be a port town. The most famous landmark here is the Sultan Mosque, a marrying of Islamic and European architecture and design. Another prominent area is Haji Lane, a colorful commercial district where you can find bars, restaurants, cafes, boutiques, and fashion stores. If you like to bring home some traditional local products, you may head to Busara Street and Arab Street. Another ethnic district you should visit is Chinatown. It is best known for its vibrant shops and restaurants. But a walk across the neighborhood is not just enjoyable, it can prove enlightening too. Begin your journey on foot at Telok Ayer MRT Station. Although part of Chinatown, Telok Ayer Street harbors multi-religious structures. This Chinese temple, this Indian shrine, this Methodist church, and this Buddhist temple and museum. A testament to how this city values diversity in religion and culture. The trail ends at Temple Street, where you can find cheap souvenirs and mementos. If you get hungry, dig into what's said to be the cheapest Michelin-starred meal in the world, this chicken and rice dish from Hawker Chan. Maxwell Food Center, a popular Hawker food court, is also just around the corner. Just across Chinatown is Little India, a neighborhood that wears the rich and colorful Tamil culture proudly. Eat at the many restaurants flanking its roads for a taste of Indian cuisine, gawk at the intricate design of this temple, and marvel at the pre-war shop houses and streets lined with vendors and peddlers. If you want cheap pies, don't be shy to step into the Mustafa Center. If it's your first time in Singapore, visit Sentosa, a resort island that is bursting with exciting adventures for the entire family. The countless activities that you can enjoy here are pretty diverse, but some of the most popular are the Luge and Tiger Sky Tower. If you're planning on spending a day in Sentosa, consider getting a Sentosa Fun Pass to skip the lines and maximize your time. It's available in three types, 55, 80, and 120 tokens. Each attraction collects tokens, and this serves as your currency on the island. Opened in February 1974, this is the first ropeway system in Singapore. Spanning the Keppel Harbor, it connects Mount Faber on the mainland to Sentosa and presents a 360-degree view of the stunning landscape around it. As you ride the monocable gondola lift, it's not hard to spot iconic sites such as Mount Faber Park, Universal Studios, and Resorts World Sentosa. Regarded as the retail and entertainment center of Singapore and one of the most vibrant shopping centers in Southeast Asia, Orchard Road is a busy belt of a good number of malls, including Tang's, one of the earliest department stores here and is easily noticeable because of the building's Chinese-style roof, Mian City, the largest shopping mall in this Orchard shopping stretch, Wisma Atria, which has a 900-seat food court, The Paragon, which is very high-end, and Lucky Plaza, one of the more budget-friendly places in the area and also home to some Pinoy shops. Woo! 12 down and there are plenty more to follow. We'll be creating a part 2 featuring the less visited attractions so be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get notified when we upload new travel videos. If you need more information about traveling around Singapore, you'll find comprehensive travel guides with sample itineraries on our website www.thepoortraveler.net or check out the links in the description.
If you have questions, make good use of the comment section below. You can also follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Just look for at the Poor Traveler, single L. You may also tune in to the Poor Traveler podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. That's all for now. Remember, plan smart, travel safe, and make every trip worth it.